Good morning. This morning's reading is from Luke 9, 19, verses 1 to 10. Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name Zacchaeus, the head taxman and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped, what business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there a little stunned. He stammered apologetically, Master, I give away half of my income to the poor, and if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Jesus said, Today is Salvation Day in this home. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to find and restore the lost.
Beautiful music today. Thank you, choir and ringers and all the beautiful singers today. Let us pray. For the ways we are seen and found, invited and included, we give thanks. Help us to hear your word of hope today. Amen. Here's an impossible question for you to answer before noon on a holiday weekend, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. If you had to guess, how many people do you think you see every day? And by see, I mean how many people do you pass on the street, see in the coffee shop, gather here together at church? A hundred? 200, 1,000, 2,000? I was trying to quantify this the other day and I was sitting at the airport on Friday night and there were hundreds of people who passed by as I was sitting in the arrival lounge. I saw another 50 or so at the grocery store, a handful at Starbucks. We see lots of people in a day, but how many people do we really see? How many people do we take time to listen to and to hear their story and acknowledge as someone with sacred worth? And how many people see us that way? Being seen or acknowledged is the way, in this way is one of the most basic human needs. We all need to feel seen. And the reality is that many of us don't experience this kind of affirmation regularly. Whether it's our age or our race or our gender or our economic status or anything else, sometimes we feel as if we don't matter, that we are invisible, passed by, ignored, seen as nothing special. There's an Episcopal priest in Houston, Texas, whom I follow on Facebook. Her congregation is a typical church, smaller numbers these days, an older congregation. And she found that people weren't coming in during the week at all. And so she decided to be present and open to others out in front of the church. And so every week she sets up a table and a few chairs and makes a pot of coffee and she sits out in front of her church. She has a sign on the table that says, coffee, conversation, Netflix recommendations. People stop by and sit for a bit. Some come with things on their hearts that they wanna talk about. Some come for a cup of coffee she probably tells them what she's watching on Netflix. But my guess is the real reason people come and stop by is because they want to be seen, to be reminded that they matter. We all want to be seen. Our story from Luke today is about being seen, really seen. Jericho was busy the day that Jesus arrived. People gathered in the main square waiting to get a glimpse of the one causing waves throughout Palestine. Jesus had eschewed all the normal religious and cultural norms. He had eaten with people considered unclean by religious law. He had performed miracles on Sabbath days and had questioned the religious leaders and their actions. The people that gathered in that crowd knew the stories of Jesus. They knew exactly who he would bless with his time. People like them. 
those on the margins and the poor and the outcast. Soon they saw a man join the crowd. It wasn't Jesus, but Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a well-known figure around Jericho. If you asked any person in that crowd who the most despised and hated person in their community was, they would have all pointed to Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, an agent of the Roman Empire, given authority to demand payment and add more on top of that for his own pocket. And on top of that, Zacchaeus was the top tax collector in a large city, making more money than any of the others. As one scholar put it in very scholarly terms, Zacchaeus was a hated scumbag. He was definitely not on anyone's Thanksgiving guest list. Despite all the details that Luke provides in this story, we actually don't have any idea why Zacchaeus was there. Why would he come to see a person who didn't have anything nice to say about the wealthy and powerful? Maybe Zacchaeus thought he might just blend into the crowd. Or maybe he wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus coming through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem. Maybe he just wanted to see this person that had caused such a commotion. Maybe he was just in the area and the crowd caught him by surprise. Whatever the motivation or the reason he was there, Zacchaeus decided to make the most of it. He found a sycamore tree to climb so that he could get a better view as Jesus entered the city. When the crowd saw Zacchaeus climb up the tree to get a better look, they snickered with one another. Wait till Jesus sees him. I bet he gives him a piece of his mind. They had reason to think this. In the 18 chapters leading up to this story, we are told again and again that the rich are not favored by Jesus. He rebukes them, and he has very little patience for them. And so the crowd thinks they know how this story is going to end, and they are there for it. Jesus will go to Zacchaeus, a scumbag and a cheat, and condemn him right there as he's in the tree. Jesus is going to walk over to him, strike him down, and lift somebody else up, somebody more worthy. But that's not what happens. Jesus does notice Zacchaeus in the tree, and Jesus walks over to him and says, I see you, Zacchaeus. Today I am coming to your house for dinner. Jesus sees Zacchaeus. Jesus sees him as a person of sacred worth, Despite what he has done or not done, Jesus names him as a beloved child of God. And Jesus acknowledges this for everyone in the crowd to hear. Here is Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, a part of the family tree, our relative we don't know if Zacchaeus changed his ways after this encounter. Scholars disagree about whether giving his money to the poor was in defense or was a promise for future action. I'm not sure it matters. All of us have actions to defend in ways that we might live more as God desires. The point is that we are all included in God's great family tree, seen and acknowledged, loved and included, all beloved children of a God who sees us and tells us we belong, whoever we are, scumbag tax collector or saint, and everybody in between. If there is a question posed in Luke's gospel as to who is included in God's care, Luke's answer is, even a person like Zacchaeus. Even a person like Zacchaeus. 
I remember a couple who called me up one day as I was sitting in my office at a church I worked in before. They had wanted to come to church, but they were afraid that they might be rejected and othered. They had gone on our website and saw that our church welcomed everybody. And so they gathered up their nerve and they called and asked. And they said, if you welcome all these people, then maybe you will welcome us also. Even Zacchaeus, even you, even me, all of us. This is why being together on Sundays matter. For some in our community, this might be the only time that they have a conversation with another person all week. For others, maybe this is the only place that they are seen and acknowledged. We greet one another, we have conversations, we talk about our favorite desserts, and we practice seeing each other as God's beloved. When we see, really see one another, we know we matter, and we affirm that others matter too. Theologian Barbara Brown Taylor says, this takes intention and a recommitment every day. It takes leaving our house with the idea that each person we meet is someone that reflects God in some way. We can meet God in our children and in the parking lot attendant and in the newcomer and even sitting, even in the person sitting next to us in the pew this morning. And I might add, we might even see that in the person sitting across from us at a family meal this weekend. This week, a, a dear friend of my husband's family died. His name was Bubba. His given name was Van High, but when you're from the southern part of the U.S., you have other names. Bubba wasn't always seen in the small southern community in which he grew up. He didn't always fit the norms of others in his town. He was the high school choir director and the church organist. He ran restaurants and catered beautiful parties and receptions. And he had a restaurant in this small town called the Barony House. And every day, and especially on Sundays, you could go there and get a plate of meat and three vegetables. Whenever we went back to see Pete's family, we would eat there. And every time we did, I was struck by the hospitality that Bubba offered every guest in the restaurant. Bubba was always in the dining room, stopping at every single table, greeting people, even if he didn't know them, he would ask about their day and he would make sure they had everything they needed. Yes, the food was delicious. Yes, it was a beautiful and nice place to go after church. But the real reason that people flocked to this place was that for that hour that they were eating their meal, they felt seen. They felt seen and they felt that they mattered, even for just that one hour. I wonder if not being seen throughout life made Bubba even more determined to make every person feel welcomed and seen in his restaurant. That's our invitation, to know we are seen and loved by God, each one of us, no matter what we have done, or what we have left undone. We matter. And then the invitation is to see others in that same way. To take time to listen and to share stories and to acknowledge one another as people of sacred worth. We are loved by a God who sees us, who we are, warts and all. A God who looks for us, comes to us and says, I see you. You are beloved. And I'm having dinner with you tonight. May we feel that love and being seen this week. Amen.